Hi, in this video, let us first do an overview of the sorting algorithms in which we have seen, and then we shall move to other examples of divide and conquer. Here is a table with the sorting algorithms in which we have seen. We have started with the bubble sort. As we saw, bubble sort sorts in time n square, quadratic time in the number of elements. However, it can do so using just constant space. And another advantage is that it's very easy to code. If you want to sort a very small number of elements like 100, bubble sort is a good choice. Then we saw counting sort. Counting sort can sort in time n plus k under the assumption that the input range is between 0 and k. So you're sorting numbers which are between 0 and k. If you think of k being of the order of n, this is a linear time in n. And the space has the same form, is order of n plus k. Using counting sort, we then built a relic sort, which is a more fancy version of counting sort, in which you make the assumption that the inputs are now d-digit integers in base k. Okay, so you think of the input elements as numbers in a certain basis, and you sort each digit by each digit. So the time for this uh, is d times the time for counting sort. So it's d times n plus k. And the space is just a space of counting sort because you, because you can reuse the space uh, for different digits. Okay, so this gives many settings in which you can sort in linear time, even if the magnitude of your numbers is not uh, linear. For example, you can sort in linear time numbers between 1 and n square. Then we saw quick sort, and quick sort comes in different flavors depending on whether uh, you pick the pivot deterministically or with a randomized procedure. If you pick the pivot deterministically, then actually the time can be as bad as n square. Um, the space is always constant, so this. Uh, is pretty much the same as what you get with a bubble sort in the worst case. However, if you every time pick the pivot randomly, you can guarantee that the number of comparisons will be order of n log n, and the space will be constant. So this has constant space like bubble sort, but uh, is uh, uh, much faster. If you want a deterministic algorithm which does have similar time, you can do merge sort, which is the first example of divide and conquer which we saw. This takes time order of n log n, but the space now is linear. And finally, we saw oblivious merge sort. Um, this takes a little bit more time than merge sort, is order of n log square n, um, but the space is only constant. And another advantage is that the comparisons are independent of the input. So this is useful uh, if you want to sort uh, with a non-programmable piece of hardware and has other uh, applications as well. Remarkably, sorting is still open. Okay? We still don't know what is the complexity of sorting. And here is a simple problem um, that is still open. So if your input are n integers between 0 and 2 through the w minus 1, okay, for a parameter w, and you allow the usual operations like plus times n on w bit integers in constant time, then it's still open whether you can sort in linear time, in time order of n. It's a fantastic question and you should give it some thought tonight. The best known time for this is order of n log log n, with a very non-trivial algorithm. Okay, after this overview of sorting algorithms, let us go back to other examples of divide and conquer. The first example that we're going to see is for selecting the h smallest element in an array. So here again, your input is an array of n elements, say, and you want to find uh, an element uh, which has a specific um, place uh, in the sorted array. 
more specifically, um, we define uh, um, S A of H to be to be the H smallest element in array A, which is the element at position H in B, where B is the sorted version of A. Okay, so if you sort A producing B, S A of H is the element in position H in B. The element in position n plus 1 divided by 2, when n is odd, is called the median of A. Okay, is the element which is in the middle. We are going to give a fancy algorithm to compute S A of H for any H with just order of n comparisons. Of course, uh, we could compute S A of H with order of order of analog n comparisons uh, just by using a sorting algorithm like merge sort and then fetching the h element from the sorted array. However, now we're doing faster. We are just going to use order of n comparisons, which is faster by a log factor. We are, not going to so we are not going to sort the entire array, of course. We are just going to be able to fetch the h smallest element. Here is the algorithm. The algorithm is a very clever recursive algorithm. The first thing that we are going to do, we are going to divide our array in consecutive blocks of five elements. So if we start with A, then we are going to create a subarray A from 1 to 5, A from 6 to 10, A from 11 to 15, and so on. So each of these groups or subarrays has five elements. And then we are going to find the median of each group. So M1 will be the median of the first group, which I can write as S of A1.053, because the 3 is the median element. M2 will be the median of S, the median of A6.10. M3 will be the median of A11.15, and so on. So here I have written a picture showing the array A. So each column corresponds to a group of five elements. And we're going to find the median of each group. So for example, M1 could be this element here. M2 could be this element here. M3 could be this element here. And the last one could be this element here, for example. So now we have computed n over 5 medians, m1, m2, all the way to m, n over 5. And the next thing that we are going to do is to compute the median of the medians. Okay. This is a crazy operation, so we're going to let x be the median of the array m1, m2, m3, dot, 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 m, n over 5. Okay. So x is some other element. It's the median of the medians. Remember the median, if the number of elements is, uh, is odd, can be written as this. Number of elements plus 1 divided by, by 2. Once we have x, we are going to partition a according to x. Okay, so he, this is the partition function which we saw, which we saw for a quick sort. Okay, um, what it does, remember, it's going to place x in the right position in the sorted array. Everything to the left of x will be smaller than x. Everything to the right of x will be larger than x. Okay. So once you partition, the partition function returns the position of x in the array. Let this be k. Okay, so k is the position of x in the array. Now, if it if it turns out that k, this position of x, is equal to h, h is the 
in the, is the index of the element that, that you wanted to find. Okay, if h is equal to k, then you're done, right? You know that the partition will place x at the right position. If that position is h, that's exactly what you wanted. You can return x, you're done. Okay, otherwise, if h is less than, than uh, k, Okay, that means that uh, you were looking for an element which is less than x. So you're going to return s of a from 1 to k minus 1 of h. Okay, you're still looking for the h element, but it will be less than x. So you, so you, just, you just need to go you just need to look in the array from 1 to k minus 1. Otherwise, h is larger than k, okay? and then you're going to um, look for the right element in the array to the right of x, to the right of x, so that's a k plus 1 dot, dot n, okay? and which index you should ask, ask for? Well, h is larger than k, so we can throw away k plus 1 elements and we need to look for the element at position h minus k minus 1. So here is a picture of the array where the element x is at position k. Okay, the first thing that we should worry about is whether this algorithm is actually correct. Does this algorithm actually compute S A H? Okay. And by inspection, we can convince ourselves that it is actually correct. Okay. Let us see why. So, in the case in which H is equal to K, okay, then it's clear that it's correct to return x. We were looking for an element at position h. Partition um, placed x in position k equal to h, so x is the number that we are looking for. Now let us consider the case in which h is less than k. Okay. Well, why is it correct to return uh, s of a1 dot dot k minus 1 h? Well, because by the property of partition, we know that all the elements to the left of x will be less than x, and all the elements to the, to the right of x will be larger than x, okay? Because x was a position k, and we're looking for an element of position h, clearly the elements to the right of x, which are larger than x, can, cannot uh, be the answer. So we can just look at these elements here and fetch the h smallest element. Okay? And a similar, similar argument uh, applies for the case in which h is larger than uh, k. We just need to adjust uh, the index of the element that we are looking for uh, because uh, uh, we are throwing away the smaller ones. Okay, now we need to worry about the running time of this algorithm. So at the top here, I've just repeated the, the algorithm. Okay. And now let's consider the running time of the algorithm. So when we run partition, then half of the medians that we computed here, m1, m2, m3, and so on, will be larger than x by definition of median. Each of these median will contribute how many elements from their group of five? Well, it will contribute at least, we will, it will contribute at least three. Okay, because the median is the middle element, so it will have two elements larger and two elements smaller. Okay, so when we recurse, we are going to recurse on at most 7n over 10 elements. Okay? 
because you will throw away in the median from each group and also two other elements from each group. So you're throwing away at least uh, three n over 10 elements uh, and you will recover some at most uh, seven n over 10 elements. For example, in this case here in which uh, uh, we recurs uh, to the left of x, uh, what we are throwing away are the medians which are to the right of x and each median will also carry, will carry with it two other elements which are larger than the median and so larger than x and so in total we are throwing away 3 n over 10 elements and we recurse just on 7 n over 10. This gives a recursion of the form tn, the running time, is at most at tn over 5 plus, sorry, t of n is at most t of, t of n over 5 plus t of 7n over 10 plus order of n. Okay, why is this? Well, first, uh, um, the computation of this n over 5 medians here takes time order of n. Okay, each median takes constant time because it's just a median of five elements and you have order of n elements, so it's order of n time. Then we need to find the median of the, of the medians. This is a recursive call on an array of length n over five, so it's t of n over five. Okay, and then we do this uh, recursion and by what we said, we're going to recurse on, it, on at most seven n over 10 elements. So we have this strange recursion here and we're going to argue now that this implies that t of n is equal to order of n. Okay, so let's see how we can solve this recurrence. Here is the recurrence up top. The way, we, the way in which we're going to solve this uh, is via a guess and verify technique. Specifically, we're going to guess that the t of n is at most uh, a n for some constant a. And then we're going to verify whether the recurrence hold for uh, the guess. So what we need to verify is that uh, a of n is at most uh, a n over 5 plus a 7n divided by 10 plus cn. Now, if we divide by a n, this inequality is equivalent to 1, being at most 1, 1 over 5 plus 7 over 10 plus c over a. The critical thing for us is that 1 over 5 plus 7 over 10 is equal to 9 over 10, which is strictly less than 1. Okay? Hence, if you make the constant a large enough, depending on c, this will be satisfied. Okay? You will have 1 will be at most 9 over 10, plus something that you can make as small as you want by making a large enough. So it will be true. In particular, you can pick, for example, a to be equal to c times 10, and this will be satisfied. Uh, this concludes the analysis of the running time and our exposition of the algorithm for selecting the h smallest element.